Hey guys, welcome back to our continuation of our tutorial on building an app that uses JSON to load data from an external uh, database that's on a public web server. Okay, so a quick recap so far. What we've done at this point is set up our storyboard file. Uh, we pulled onto our stage in our storyboard a navigation controller. Uh, we've also created a a subclass of UI table view controller called cities view controller and we set our table view controller within the storyboard uh, to use that particular class we've also created a uh, subclass of NS object called city we're going to use that particular city class to essentially store and create uh, where you're going to use it to store the data that we retrieve uh, using JSON and then essentially create uh, city objects which we will now add to an array Okay, so our next stop is our cities view controller file. So let's jump into the header file first. One of the first things I want to do here is I want to create two uh, NS mutable arrays. So we're just going to say add property non atomic strong and we're going to say NS mutable array. First array we're going to call JSON array. And then the second array we're just going to call cities array. So again, but this will also be an NS mutable array. It is crucial that you set these up as NS mutable arrays, which means that we can actually edit these or add and remove items from these at runtime, unlike NS arrays where you cannot. Okay, with that done, let us quickly synthesize it again. Some people might prefer not to do it this way. Uh, I personally like uh, doing the add property add synthesize method. It's your preference at this point. Um, neither option is really incorrect. Okay, so we'll say cities array, do that. The other thing we'll need to do is implement a method uh, to actually retrieve our data. So I'm just gonna do a quick private mark here just because it's easier to read. And I'm going to say void retrieve data. And this is just a method that we're going to set up uh, to be able to pull the data using um, the uh, web service that we've got. Okay, So I'll copy that so I can implement it here. I usually like to add this at the end so I'll just again do a pragma mark and this is going to, I'll just add class methods, add that in. And if you haven't worked with pragma marks before, the reason I add these is because have a look here within this breadcrumb area if you drop down these little bolded items are essentially coming from here so I've got a um, snippet with an Xcode that allows me to quickly generate pragma marks and some other code um, as and when I need using a keyboard sh um, using a key shortcut or a key combination and if you're interested in that take a look at my video on Xcode snippets I promise it's going to speed up your uh, implementation quite a bit Okay, with that done, uh, one of the things we'll want to do next is import our city.h file because we're going to be creating city objects within this particular implementation file. The other thing we'll want to do is do a quick pound define uh, and save the, the URL for uh, our web service. Okay, so I've got this copy pasted, so I'm just going to paste it in here. You can uh, paste the exact same URL. I'm going to leave this up. It's on my server. Uh, I'll leave it up so you can actually play with it. Uh, but this is what we want to do next. All right, so with this done, let's go about actually creating our uh, retrieve data method. So let's do that here. We'll scroll back down. So the first thing we want to do is create an NS URL object. And we're just going to call it URL, real simple. And we're going to say nsurl URL with string. And we are going to pass it that get data URL constant that we created earlier. Uh, and we could, of course, have just done an NS string here, but it's, it's nice to have all of these at the top of the page, which is why we created it as a, as a constant there. All right, next up, we're going to say, let's create an NS data object this time. We'll just call it data, seems logical. And we're going to say NS data, data with contents of URL. And this time we'll pass it the NS URL we created just a few seconds ago. All right, with that done, 
remember our JSON array that we set up earlier. Okay, so we're going to use that next. We're going to say NS JSON serialization, and then we're going to pass it JSON object. This is the uh, we want this second one. So oops, JSON with data. That's the one we want, and we are going to say well NS data. We'll just pass it data. Options we're going to set to K nil options and error we're just going to set to nil this way we won't have to actually provide one of those ns error type objects all right okay that's done with that particular item out of the way let's go ahead and set up our cities array so we're just going to say cities array ns mutable array alloc and in it okay right next what we will do is at this point we've got a bunch of data in our json array or rather we don't have the data yet but uh, once this application is running this json array will get a list of sort of really all the data that comes back from our web service will be loaded into this and what we want to do from here is essentially create city objects remember that little class that we created earlier city uh, we will take every piece of JSON data, uh, which will have information like a country, a city's name, its ID number in the database. We'll also have information like uh, population, state, country. And we want to be able to grab all of those pieces of information from our JSON array, uh, then uh, create a city object, and then load that object into our cities array. And the cities array is essentially what we will use to load up our table view. All right, so that's what we're going to do next. So the way we do that is we just loop through our JSON array. And nothing fancy here, just a simple little for loop. So we're going to say for int i equals 0, i less than JSON array dot count. And we're going to increment this and say i plus plus. Okay, so I'm going to bump this down. It's a little bit easier to read. Okay, within this particular setup we're going to create our city object and we're going to say ns string cid just going to make up a variable name here is equal to json array object at index and the index will be i because that's what we're it's essentially the index in our loop and then we're going to say object for key and we are going to give it a key. In this case, it's going to be ID. And we need to do the exact same process for the rest of our key values. So I'm just going to copy paste. I think we've got five pieces of information. So I'm just going to copy paste that. So we'll change this to C name, C state. population and last but not least C country okay now we also of course have to change the ID uh, I'm sorry the key values here and this is sort of a really really crucial operation so make sure you name these or the key values need to match exactly in terms of case um, if they don't then you won't get that piece of information in uh, your city object okay so I happen to know these are set up as camel case here so we'll say city population and this last one is actually just set up as country so it's whatever you've set up um, in your web service whatever the JSON is being returned as just take a look at that and you'll be able to tell uh, exactly what you need to set this up as okay with that done what we want to do next is add the city object to our cities array. So the way we would do that is we'd say cities array and we'd say add object and for this particular object we would first allocate we do a city alloc and then we would say something like init and here's our method that we created earlier. So again init with city name which in this case is going to be c name city string which is 
uh, I'm sorry, city state, which is going to be C state, city country, which is going to be C country, city population, which will be C population, and city ID, which is just going to be C ID. If I can type here, right, very good. What that does is it creates the city object, which is what this particular code will do, and then we simply add that object into our array. The reason we can do that is because cities array is an NS mutable array. With that done, we can come down here and say reload our table view. We want to do this outside our for loop. And since we don't really have an outlet to our table view, we'll just say self dot table view, and we'll just say reload data. And that's just a built-in method that we can call on our table view. And that is essentially what will allow us to load uh, the data into our table view. Okay, with that done, let's just jump up into view did load. Uh, do a couple things here. We're going to set the title of our tape of our view controller. So we'll just say something like self the title. Let's call it cities of the world. And then let's also call the load data method. So we'll just say self the retrieve data and what I'm gonna do is build and run this and you're not gonna see anything within the table view uh, so the reason being we haven't actually changed anything in our self road index path method to actually display any of this data but what I did want to show you is that the application builds and runs at this point so we've got no errors also if we were to put in a breakpoint which I can do by just clicking in the gutter here with the numbers and build and run my app. You get our little debugger here. You can pull it up and you can see that our JSON array has six objects in it and our cities array has six objects in it. So let's expand cities array. You'll notice at index zero, we've got this NS object and you can see all the different values that are being pulled in. So this is pretty handy. So if you run into a situation where you are not seeing any data um, within your application. You might want to put in a breakpoint and make sure that you are actually returning uh, the correct JSON and things are getting populated like they are supposed to. All right, so let me stop the application here. And we're also going to take a pause in the video and continue in sort of the next section. Um, so anybody that needs to catch up can catch up at this point. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.